Gianni Versace's 1992 Miami collection was a major contribution to the fashion industry. Joining us is Hal Rubenstein to tell us more about how this collection, um, how this collection defined fashion and how it ended up in his latest book, The Looks of Love, 50 Moments in Fashion That Inspired Romance. Hal, welcome to Ultimate Report. Hi, good to see you again, Mary. It's great to have you join us and to learn more about this facet of your book. So what inspired the inclusion of Gianni Versace's 1992 Miami collection into your recent book? Yeah. Gianni, I mean, I'll, I'll preface this by saying Gianni was a great and close friend. I had that luck. Uh, and uh, we met in Miami. We met in Miami at the very moment that basically that, that makes this the inception. Um, there was probably no greater enthusiast in, in terms of fashion, in, in terms of the exuberance of fashion, in terms of the power of fashion, in terms of fashion's ability to sort of raise somebody's sense of self and power and sensuality than Johnny Versace. And Johnny was always a pioneer. He was always a rocket ship, stylistically. Uh, and he was always an adventurer, unlike a lot of other designers who basically live within a bubble and it's fashion uberalis. Um, that wasn't him. Johnny was a great collector of paintings, of art, sculpture. Uh, he designed costumes for the ballet and for the opera. Um, he just, if, if there was culture out there, movies, it, there, was, there was Johnny soaking it all in because frankly, to him, all of that became inspiration. The inspiration for his, own, for his own creativity. And when he discovered Miami, it was like this infusion into his arm. It just jet propelled him. What happened was actually uh, Versace and his, and his partner Antonio, they were on their way to Cuba. To, to see Cuba, and they, you know, at that time, Cuba was not an was not an easy place to get to. So you had a charter flight from Miami, and the, the charter got delayed. And so Gianni told his driver, "Take me some." One of his favorite words, "Take me someplace that isn't boring." So the driver took him to the News Cafe, which was literally I hate to use the term Ground Zero because it now means something else, but it it was it was. It was Miami Central in, in the early 90s when, remember this is, Miami was, was bursting at that time. It, Bruce Weber, uh, 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 Bruce, Bruce Weber, lots, lots, it was so much photography, fashion photography going on because oh, the nice. weather was gorgeous, because the, because the costs were cheap, because, the, um, because the, the, the location shots were fine and the, the, the natural light was incredible. So, so many, so many fashion shoots. I was at the New York Times at the time, but so many fashion shoots were happening in Miami. I was doing a fashion shoot in Miami at the time, which is why I was down there. Anyway, the driver took, 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 my, to, took Johnny to the news cafe. And where you have fashion shoots, you have models and you have would-be models and people who want to be near would-be models. And all he saw was beauty coming from every single direction. Most of it on roller skates, if you remember, this is 1992. And within five minutes, he became entranced. He canceled his trip to, 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 to Cuba and decided he was coming to stay in Miami. I had a friend uh, named Richard Pullman who actually used to do, used to work at the agency that booked the models for Bruce Weber. And so Richard called me up and said, do you know this, 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 this designer Versace? And I said, yeah, I think I do. Yeah, why? And he said, he's here in Miami. He's stuck in Miami. He wants to see everything. I don't know where to take him. Come take me. Just come with me. Take, let's, let's, let's take him around the town. So we did. And Johnny was just, in, he was fascinated. He was fascinated by the sun and the beauty. And, and really, it, it was a world full of young, beautiful, very oily people at the time, <laughs> just suntanned and glistening. He was entranced. Um, about a month later, he decides I'm buying a house, and of course, purchased Casa Casarina, that great house that was on that was on Ocean Drive and 12th Street. And he set up his second home here, and he loved Miami. And he couldn't come more often. He would come to Miami just to sketch and design collections and then fly back. He was going back and forth the way New Yorkers were flying back and forth to mm -hmm. Miami, except he was coming from Milan. Uh, 
And sure enough, in 1992, I mean, this was a man who always loved color, who always loved sensuality and overt sex in, in, in fashion. But suddenly, first in a women's collection for spring, he sent down this collection that was full of seashells and, 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 and starfish and sunlight in between, interspersed in between medusas and all the other, and the Greek key symbols and everything else that was incredibly Versace and everything slipped down to here and cut up to there. And remember, this is the year of supermodels because Johnny basically helped create them. So sure. it's, you know, it's Cindy and it's, it, <clears throat> and it, and it's Christy and it's Linda. And of course it's his favorite Naomi coming out wearing all these amazing, everything belongs, looks like it belongs on a beach. But that wasn't enough. Basically, the this, this, this season after, the, the couple of weeks after, he, he sends out a men's collection. Remember, Johnny loved men even more than he loved women. And at that time, we didn't know the names of the models, the, the, the male models, though most people watching those runway shows wishes they did and probably wish they had their phone numbers as well. Um, these guys were spectacular. You know, Cristiano Ronaldo, the soccer player, everybody looked like him. You know, wow. It was one spectacular man after the other wearing a silk brocaded, you know, one of those, those, those silk brocaded shirts, cut, you know, basically totally cut down to there with, with white pants, with little eyelet cutouts and lace shirt. The, the clothes were so unbelievably overt, but so unbelievably made. And it was Johnny just saying, sex is something amazing. Sex is something glorious. Basically, showing off is, is the best thing you can do because how long are you going to look this good while you got it? Truly flaunted. And it, the collection, not a, it actually became, in his ode to Miami, it's like in the same way that Miami adopted Miami Vice 10 years earlier, the look of Miami Vice, the TV show 10 years earlier, they literally adopted this entire look. Everywhere you looked in Miami, a guy, everybody was wearing Versace bathing suits. Everybody was wearing these silk shirts. J Johnny became like, he became like the, the, the godfather of Miami, he became the patron saint of the city. Everywhere he walked, there were legions of people following him. But it was also because he defined a mood. He defined a mood that was very, remember coming out, and, and these are things not to forget too, coming out of, of, of the deepest part of the AIDS crisis where people, yeah. where people were afraid of sex, where people right. stopped talking about sex, where it became something that was hidden and awful and ugly and deadly. Um, I'm not saying this is exactly, this is before the cocktail and stuff started, but he was saying, you know something, you can't deny this is a part of life. This is a glorious part of life. You know, there are other, th you, you may not have the innocence that you had 10, 15 years ago, but, but to deny this is, is, to deny, is to deny something wonderful and extraordinary about the way we live and the way we love and the way we mate and the way we get together and the, great, the way we express joy. And I think that's why the collection became so influential because to take somebody who has had such incredible skill, you know, incredible facility and to apply it to something so incredibly exuberant. I remember, as I, as I, as I mentioned in the book, Johnny had a very specific way about how to wear these $1,500 silk shirts. $1,500 sounds like a lot now. It was even a lot more in 1992. I remember he said, Halino, you know the best way to wear this shirt. He goes, you take it to shirt. He goes, you put the shirt on. You don't button it. You don't button You just let the shirt hang from your shoulder. Then you put on your bathing suit. And then you put on your roller skates. And then you take another shirt. And you wrap it around your waist. And then you fly down the street like a bird. And he said, that is perfetto. That's and, amazing. And I did exactly what he said. <laughs> you know? And how was it? I mean, what was your experience? Was hilarious. You flying like a bird? I mean, look what you, you were just, 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 you were just bird wearing magnificent Versace and plumage. I mean, how could you not attract attention? I mean, his clothes were not for wallflowers. His clothes were not for people who basically, you know, so don't, don't want to make an entrance. I, I, you know, Johnny basically wanted to wear, he, his, feel, his feeling was you should go through life with a spotlight on you. Right. Absolutely. Wow. So this collection, this particular collection, the 1992 collection, it actually put, or it helped to put the city of Miami on the map. Mm -hmm. How did this happen? Well, I, I, again, I think, you know, it's, it started with, you know, with the show Miami. 
Mm -hmm. Miami, you know, again, nothing happens. Nothing happens sort of by itself. Miami was a city. You know, my grandmother used to go to go spend winters in Miami. It was it was a city full of old folks um, who went. You know, basically, with they used to call snowbirds people who came down from the north to go down there. But it, it was sort of a conflagration of certain times, certain movements within the town council and, and, and the city council of Miami changing. Uh, certain people, a woman named Barbara Holonicki on the, the board who changed all the colors around Miami. And suddenly Miami Vice, Miami Vice created, the TV show Miami Vice created this image of what Miami should look like. And actually the costume designer for that show was a woman named Milena Cananaro, who actually, if the name doesn't trip off anybody's tongue, she was the she was the costume designer. She won Academy Awards for the for the Godfather films. She used to work with okay. Francesco Coppola, and also for uh, Bernardo Bern 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 Bertolucci. And incredible, I mean, incredible taste. She created this initial look, you know, of Crockett and Tubbs and those and the pink suits and the pale and the pale suit. And then Gianni went and took it and just ramped it up. And the combination of Miami Vice. And Gianni, and the change in the town to change the colors of the buildings, and 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 the the, the all the fashion and the, the fashion shooting going on there, and Bruce Weber Bruce Weber's image of beauty combined with Calvin Klein's image of beauty, who also started going down there, combined with Terry Mugler's design, who used to basically station himself in the Colony Hotel. Okay, everybody started coming. Everybody in fashion started coming down to Miami, and you know where where fashion goes, press goes. And where press goes, fantasy goes. And suddenly this city just came to life. I started going down there in 1986. I bought an apartment down there in 1991. It was a blast. And you went down there and it kind of had that feeling that New York did in the 70s, that anything could happen. And so, right, exactly. And, and well, who wouldn't want to imitate that kind of fashion of exuberance, that fashion of life affirming, that, 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 that fashion that basically Got you noticed, got you attraction, excuse me, got you laid, what, you know, whatever it was. It was, well, that, that, that's, the, that's the reality. I mean, you know, John would be the first person to tell you, fashion is about sex. Yeah. And it's not, is to deny its very power. There you go. Well, how, where can we purchase our copy of The Looks of Love, 50 Moments in Fashion That Inspired Romance? If it's not at your local bookstore, they can get it. If you have a local bookstore, they can, you can get it right away. If not, you can go on Amazon.com. It's there. You can go on BarnesandNoble.com. Or you can get it on, on your Kindle if you like, though it's really much more fun to have a hardcover. But then again, I'm very old-fashioned. Um, there it is. You can get it on HSM. You can get on HSN where you can where you can shop on my clothing line, uh, How yep. Room Collection. I forgot about that. Before. And it's a great collection, by the way. I've seen it more than Thank once. I much. like it. Thank you. Yeah, we're in our third year now. I'm very proud of it. Awesome. All right. And uh, Hal, thanks so much for joining us. It's been great having you on the show and learning more about Gianni Versace in relation to your book. Wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. Catch up with me online. I can be reached at www beautyreport.com b-e-a-u-t-e report.com on twitter at beauty publicist and ultimate report on youtube everyone thanks so much for joining us on ultimate report have a beautiful and successful week Mwah.